let's do this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. So I'm being a little quiet. The homeowner's still sleeping, so don't want to be rude and wake him. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for, for watching. I want to thank everybody for bearing with me with these non-live episodes. Uh, there are definitely not as few of you watching, which tells me that there's something about the live element that you enjoy. So that's good to know. Uh, after today, there's just one more for tomorrow. Um, but for all I know, I may, I don't know. I'll probably record it, upload it, and see what happens Wednesday morning. I don't know. I keep going back and forth how I feel about whether or not I'm going to do it live or not. Oh, oh. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the birds, but they're loud. I caught up on sleep. I only slept like eight hours last night. So we've got some questions. And I'm going to go through them. I'm going to answer them. Uh, I've got my phone propped up against my laptop so I can read it. All right. Is there ever a set? Is there such a thing as too much training? If so, what does that look like? So overtraining is absolutely a thing. Uh, it's a thing in anything. So the thing to remember when we talk about training, we're training in a couple different ways. It, we're talking about developing skill, and we're talking about developing. Uh, well, let's let's say physical adaptation, strength, speed, neuro, neuromuscular, adap neuromuscular adaptation. And in order for those things to happen, to develop skill, you have to be able to practice at a fairly high level. Let's say you're practicing a, a difficult spinning kick combination. And you get it right 10, 20, 30 times, but then you keep practicing and you do it another 500 times terribly. You're actually conditioning your body to get better at doing it terribly, not the good ones. So you have to make sure that you have enough left in the tank when you're practicing skill to get something out of that skill practice. Skill practice should always be front-loaded in a martial arts class, not at the end. But sometimes there are specific things that you're, you're training for, and, and that might be appropriate. Uh. So overtraining, in the case of skill, would be when you just physically or, or mentally can't wrap your head around that new skill practice. You, you feel tired, you feel useless, you get frustrated and angry. These are all legitimate feelings. So at that point, maybe you take a step back, take a day off, take a couple days off, take a week off. Perfectly fine. On the other side, physical adaptation in terms of primarily strength. This is where people um, are used to the concept of overtraining. Remember that you get better, you get physically healthier from recovery, not the act of beating up your body. If that's all it took, was beating up your body, then you would never need rest days. You would never need to recover. You would never need to heal. But we do. So if you're finding that you're going into class and you're not able to perform where you should be able to, you know, if you're used to be able to do, let's pick a numerical example, um, 10 push-ups and you get to three and your body just won't do more, assuming that you're not just tired from that class, it may be need to take some time off. So, that's that. All right. Do you ever wish there was more martial arts content on cable, satellite, other than UFC? Absolutely. Uh, I always wish there, wish there was more martial arts content. Why do you think we keep making more martial arts content? Whistlekick, at the end of the day, is a company built for people like me. Because I figured, hey, if I like it, there's at least one person. We're not going to see much in the way of, of traditional martial arts competition on TV. Uh, the U.S. Open's coming up, so we'll see some of that on, what is that, ESPN2, which is great. But that is the exception, not the rule. Uh, and, you know, remember, they only show the, the night shows, the, the big stuff on stage, because it's one person to watch at a time, which is much easier to set up cameras for than 8, 10, 12, 24 rings. If you could wave a magic wand and send one article from Marshall Journal to martial artists everywhere, what article would you choose? Well, the one I would have sent uh, a while ago would have been the one on, um, 
uh, the Whistle Kick Report, where we were doing some statistical analysis of things going on in the martial arts, but we shut it down because we weren't getting much in the way of participation. Uh, we, you know, it started off strong, and by strong I mean dozens, and we really needed to get it to thousands in order for the data to be worthwhile. So, uh, if I was to send a more current article, uh, Shifu Jonathan Bluestein's article that just went up about um, the one question, ask an instructor the best question. I forget the, the way he titled it, but that's a pretty great piece. If you've been doing well, you might want to check that out. Uh, MarshallJournal.com. If anybody's unfamiliar with Marshall Journal, Marshall Journal is the site that we sponsor here at Whistlekick. And it is entirely free, martial arts content. All the writers are free. You know, they, they write for free. The editors edit for free. Everything's done for free. We pick up the bill on the back end. And it's been a fun project to be involved in. We're watching people start their writing careers. All right. Next question. Dog hair? I think there's dog hair. All right. Martial arts schools, martial arts school owners are frequently bivocational. Are there any second jobs you have never heard a martial arts school owner have? Yeah, chef. Pretty much anything that requires you to work most nights. That's that's the main thing I haven't seen. And, and, and week, weekday nights, you know, so like a chef. Um... Or high end retail, where I shouldn't say high end, um, high position in retail. So, like a store manager or something. Uh, no, that's not true because I guess that was kind of my job. We'll go with chef. And it's important that if you're, if you're trying to grow your martial arts school, you're looking at something flexible for your job while you're doing it. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad that comes from having a, a job outside martial arts. You know, and it depends on how you want to be, how hard you want to work, and how you want to run your school. All right, final question for today. Remember, you can leave your questions below. Right here, if you're checking the show out later, maybe in a podcast, you can email jeremy at whistlekick.com. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. So here's this last question, then I'll give you your homework. Please explain the significance of yin and yang. Okay. So if you're not familiar with yin and yang, it's that kind of swirly circle thing. Right? Kind of this. Hey, I actually kind of made that a little bit. All right. It's kind of this, this symbol that you see a lot. Uh, we use it a lot in the martial arts. It shows up all over the place. And... A lot of, a lot of times when the yin-yang is, is drawn out, it leaves out the dots. So if you look at a yin-yang, you should have two opposing colors, black, white. Uh, I often see red, blue, especially in Korean systems. But let's say black, white. And in the white side, you've got a black dot, kind of like an eye. On the black side, you've got a white dot. And the idea of the yin-yang is that opposites blend together but in, in order for anything to exist, you've got to have a little bit of the opposite. So if you think of hard and soft, if the hard side is the black side of yin yang, there's a little bit of white in there. There's a little, even, even in hardness, there's a little bit of soft. Sometimes you have to dig for it, but that's, that's the idea. Uh, now, of course, there's the, the surface, way you can explore that, kind of like I just mentioned, but it gets much, much deeper. It's a philosophical concept that you can take pretty far if you want to. I'm not nearly awake enough to go further. All right. So don't forget, we do this show every, six thir every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. Now, of course, once in a while, I don't get to do it live, but I do try to bring you a show. Subscribe, leave your questions, check it out in your podcast app. All right, here's your homework. Okay, so we had a question today about waving a magic wand. 
And this is something that we all, we all like to think about. You know, uh, oh, if only, oh, if only this. Now, something I want you to realize is that when, the more seriously you contemplate those things, the more you are putting out to the world that you can't have that thing without some kind of magical interference. Well, you can do anything. It might not be easy, it might not be hard, you might not accept the consequences. But if you're willing to work hard enough for it, if you're willing to work smart enough for it, you can have everything. Anything. So don't be afraid the next time you have a thought pop up about magic wands and winning the lottery to take a step back and say, okay, that's one way. Now what's the more likely way? How could I accomplish that? I actually stopped buying lottery tickets. Not that I ever bought them often, but I stopped buying lottery tickets a few years ago because I realized I had control over getting to that point. If I wanted to make that kind of money, I could do so. And I refused to hear the plane. Uh, and I refused to leave it to anybody else's choices. And that's why I'm working so hard on what we do. All right. I hope you have a great day. I hope you go check out Martial Arts Radio. Episode 406 dropped today with Sifu Abe Santos. Great, great man. We had a fun conversation. And in that episode, we're talking a lot about Bruce Lee. Because guess what? He took over the original school in Seattle. Super cool. Super cool. We talk a lot about a lot of different things. It was a fun episode, so check it out right here on YouTube. All right, take care. Peace.